Well, we'll get started. So welcome to our kickoff uh, Q&A office hour kind of session uh, to help uh, the CNC uh, team get through any bumps, bruises, or other issues that may occur as they uh, get started. So that's why we're here. Um, we have the ability to share a screen in case questions come up so we can look at Fusion if necessary. Um, you've got Fusion experts on here. We have uh, Fusion people that are not very Fusion oriented and so we'll cover all gamuts and that so you're in a good spot. So I'll flip it over to Steve and uh, as your uh, fearless leader on the CNC team and uh, we'll go from there. <laughs> What do you mean fearless? Okay. <laughs> well, you ride bikes. That is pretty there fearless, especially on big there mountains. Hey, everybody. Um, great to see some faces now with, uh, with the names and uh, been um, answering a lot of emails the last uh, couple of days, trying to get everybody up and running and, and, uh, and operational here. And um, I think we're making pretty good progress. Thanks, of you. Thanks to those of you that uh, jumped in right away and uh, sent me a, a flurry of emails about what doesn't work. So the rest of you can benefit from that because <laughs> hopefully things are, are, uh, are a little more smooth now. The things that we didn't anticipate um, in Canvas kind of came up. Um, one, one thing in particular um, that, uh, that came up yesterday was the, the fact that if you have a resource in Canvas that is, um, is in a module and that's turned on, that's also in a module that's turned off, that resource will not appear until all of the modules that it's in are turned on. So that was a learning uh, bit yesterday. So what we did was we just turned everything on. So if you, if you go into, um, if you go into the, uh, to the Canvas course now, you're going to see a lot of, um, a lot of material that is not necessarily required for our summer institute. So um, when you go into the, into the um, course itself, you'll see a module for the CNC Summer Institute and only the material that's required um, for the Summer Institute is, is included in your requirements. There are a lot of other, um, there's a lot of other information as well. So you'll see Tom's sharing his screen now and he's got the Summer Institute showing. But if he scrolls down a little bit, you'll see there's oh, you. content library for guitar body design, a content library for sketching and modeling, and so on and so forth. So all of those things that are in the content library, you are not responsible for. However, you're welcome to look at those with the understanding that they, some of it's not quite ready for prime time. Um, but it's kind of our, it's this place where we dump a lot of material that we're developing um, and so that we can share it among all of the instructors and, and uh, see what's, uh, what's working and what's not working. And then uh, what we did was we just kind of handpicked some materials from those, um, those libraries and put them into the Summer Institute. So only those things that are in the Summer Institute are necessary for you to complete. Um, the, um, the MLAs are, are listed there and we kind of want you to do those in the order that they're listed in the, in the module so that you know, there's sort of a, there's a little bit of logic to, to the order that we have them in. They are not, um, they are not submittable or we haven't required them to be um, submitted. Um, the only thing that you'll need to submit to us are the, um, are your, Fusion design file, and then also your Fusion CAM file. So those are the only things that we're um, really asking you to, for to, for us to verify and and, and get back to you. Um, however, of course, if you have questions on any of them, um, and I've gotten quite a few questions from from different people on on the MLAs. Uh, we found one error in one of the MLAs this morning that we're going to fix. And uh, so so if you have any questions about any of them, certainly. Um, send them our way, or if you um, if you want to get some feedback on on your response on your response to the MLA, um, go for that as well. But it's not so. There's nothing to, to turn in officially. Okay, so there will only be two things to turn in 
which will be, and, and the same thing with the quizzes. Um, you can take the quizzes. I've set the quizzes to um, have unlimited attempts. So if you blow it the first time, you can keep trying until you, <laughs> until you, you get it right. Um, and uh, that, uh, so again, we're not, we're not grading you. You're not getting a grade for this. This is, uh, you're on your honor and, and hopefully, um, um, hopefully you get some benefit out of, uh, out, out of going through those materials. And, and really what we're doing is we're kind of presenting you this curriculum so that you can review it to learn, but also maybe to implement in your classroom. So, so that's why we've gone ahead and opened up all the content library too, so you can browse through those and, and see what uh, might be useful to you, okay? Um, let's see, if there's anything else on my notes. Oh, um, the um, folks that are working on um, Apple devices, um, we find that the Chrome and Firefox browsers uh, work much better um, than, uh, than the native, uh, than the Safari browser um, with Canvas. Um, I've experienced that with my students in my classroom for, for years. For some reason, Canvas and Safari just don't like to play nice together. So if you can use a Chrome or Firefox browser, you'll probably have a little better um, better results in in working with canvas hopefully that it works for you as well um, so uh, so anyhow we just wanted to have an opportunity for all of us to get together and um, and make sure that you're kicking this thing off right you know um, the dates and times of things so we're we're running this institute through this Saturday the 6th I believe I'm oh, sorry the um, the 11th um, the 11th and um, and and that's so that you can um, then devote all of your time to the electrical Institute that follows up next week um, keep in mind too that while you're doing the CNC Institute and going through the material there are also some pre-institute activities for the electric that you should be working on um, so you have double duty right now and if you go into um, the electric course, you'll see, um, I'm going to jump into that just for a quick, just to remind me of the, the, nomen the nomenclature that they used for that. In the... M0, the before the workshop begins. Yeah, that's how they set it up. Yeah, so there's the M0 before the workshop begins stuff that you should be um, be working on. Um, also, um, there are there's some paperwork that we're asking you to do, um, and you only need to do that um, once. You don't need to do it for the CNC and for the electric. So, um, so you can turn it into um, to either place, but all of that information is um, is redundant. You don't need to. To, to duplicate that. There is also some evaluation uh, material. Um, Tom, if you go to yeah, modules there, you'll see there are evaluation documents. And those documents um, explain our evaluation plan to you. And then um, those items should be submitted during the Electric Institute. Um, I've just put them there as a heads up to you for the, in the CNC so you know what's coming. Um, but there's nothing to submit. Um, to the CNC Institute for those. Okay. Yes, so, I, I actually will share each of the docs now. So if we wanted to go through them, we can on the implementation plan and the uh, portfolio yeah. requirement. You, you want to take that, Tom? Sure. Um, so as you can see on your screen, uh, this is the doc for the implementation plan. And, and so part of our evaluation process of not only this, but the uh, the total package is for you to also have the opportunity to earn a, um, and unfortunately I don't have one that I can give out for everybody, but uh, we have startup kits that uh, we um, have funded through our project grant. And so uh, filling out the implementation plan and uh, the uh, portfolio uh, component, puts you in the hopper, so to say, and then we select out um, the individuals that will receive the, uh, the startup kits. 
is a way of saying thank you for getting all the evaluation documents done. Um, I believe that there'll also be another evaluation doc uh, on the end of the electric guitar project for the CNC electric, uh, kind of evaluating this whole whole uh, remote learning environment. Um, and the idea is that this is new for us too, but the way that uh, the uh, the process is. Uh, we have to try to figure out, is this a good opportunity of how we applied this learning environment? Is it not a good opportunity of the way that we applied the learning? Do you think you could use this if you had to go to a hybrid or a fully online structure coming this fall? Um, you know, we don't know exactly. I know Sinclair hopes to be face to face this fall, but there's a lot of colleges and high schools that are still trying to figure all that out. Um, so we're not, you know, we're not sure, but we want to get your feedback on how this worked. Did it work? Did it not work? What should we improve um, if we wanted to utilize it? And again, the materials are going to be available to you. And so that's part of this, uh, the overall goal is that we want to be able to share the Canvas course in the future. So we want it to be as complete as possible. Uh, so two steps. First off is the implementation plan. Uh, second step is the portfolio requirements. So let me bring that up. So this is a little bit more in depth. Um, the implementation plan is kind of like, how are you going to utilize this? How are you going to implement it into your class structures uh, for us to gather that information? The second component is the portfolio on the process of uh, how you've gone through uh, this remote learning cycle. And for the CNC team, you only have to do this once uh, through the CNC and the electric. So you're kind of like the hybrid group that uh, has the opportunity to, to see both parts of the electric guitar uh, development process. So through this, and if you've had an opportunity to look at it, great. And if you haven't, we'll do a quick uh, review here. So uh, and it outlines exactly what the structure looks like for your portfolio. So page one is just kind of general data. Pages through two through 11 are going to be the information that you're gaining throughout the week. So each day as you're working on this, or if you, uh, you know, put together a, an eight hour a marathon session instead of doing smaller sessions each day, that works for everybody. Document though a little bit, do some screen captures that you could put into this type of a um, portfolio. That way it not only helps trigger your learning environment by reviewing exactly how you've developed that CAD design through Fusion 360, but you're also documenting any challenges that you have that your students are going to probably have uh, within the Fusion environment uh, and or successes, you know, that you had a breakthrough moment and you want to document it, do a quick screen capture. Uh, control print screens, the easiest if you're not familiar with it. There's a lot of other free software out there that you can do it. Jing, J-I-N-G is a really good one that's free uh, that does screen captures and short video captures too um, for that. So the idea is that you can, that you need to have some photographs as part of this process. And man, it's like everybody wants to talk to me today, right when we're on uh, on the system. So that's how it works. So page 12 is going to be your skills page. Highlight five skills uh, that you've learned through this process um, and how you, you plan on transferring those skill sets into your classroom. Um, page 14 is what you would do differently. Page 15 is the success. And page 16, a photograph of you with your completed guitar at the end of the electric. So one of our plans is that uh, we want to be able to show off everybody in their guitars. And so we've got a couple of cool plans for that to occur. So when you're finished building out your electric guitar, um, we need to get a photograph of you with the completed instrument. Could be anywhere. You know, if you take it on vacation with you, perfect. Uh, in the surf at the beach, or well, I guess you can't do that in Florida right now because they've closed the beaches, but uh, you know, maybe uh, somewhere else in your backyard, in your own uh, location, or 
just in your office. But the idea is that we need to get a finished, a, a good picture of you and your guitar. So um, that would be the last page to have that. And we're going to go ahead and uh, submit that. Um, and uh, if you're going to do a Google site, you could do a Google site if you want to as part of this portfolio, or you can just create it as a document and submit it. Uh, both will work as a Word doc or, like I said, you could actually create it as a live Google site. So that's the evaluation process that we're going to go through. And we'll probably have a short um, survey at the very end of the electric just to, to double check uh, how this process went. Yeah, I think there'll be more information about that during the electric um, um, webinar sessions. And... Um, and so we just wanted to give you a heads up now so that as you're working through the CNC materials, if there are some things that you want to include in the portfolio from the CNC part, you can start collecting those and have them ready to you know, insert into your um, e-portfolio. So in any case, um, uh, I, I think most everybody is, is off and running um, you should be because, you know, Saturday is quickly approaching <laughs> already and, uh, and the electric is going to uh, start. So we wanted to um, kind of open it up and, and give folks a, an, an opportunity to um, ask questions, um, if, in particular about the process. Um, there will always be questions about the individual content and, and you know, hiccups along the way in, with respect to that. But we really want to make sure everybody understands the process, what your, what your responsibilities are, um, due dates or anything like that. I essentially set all of the due dates to July 11th for all of the, um, for all of the MLA work and all of that kind of thing. So it'll show up in Canvas as being due on the 11th. You can certainly turn it in um, at, at any point. But um, our, our, I guess we'll just open it up um, if anybody has um, particular questions about process and um, and responsibility, what your responsibilities are. Is it clear or still muddy? Steve, if I may, uh, there's yeah. a text question and I don't know the answer to it. Is there anything in the support package that is unique to CNC? I don't believe so. I didn't think so either, but I didn't want to say that without uh, yeah. some sort of concurrence. I don't believe so. Yeah. And may yeah. I ask a question on behalf of one of my group? Um, I got an email and I'm sorry, I can't remember which one it is, but I know they're from the Indianapolis area. They asked about, um, you know, they'd really like to take it all the way through from doing the design and getting the G code and then actually seeing how to get this thing done on a CNC machine. And I had a few comments on that, but specifically for the person in Indianapolis, I'm only going to use a first name here so I don't throw him under the bus. Was that you, Greg? That must asked be Greg. The question? <laughs> yeah. Um, do you think Mark would be amenable to helping someone out? Um, just using his first name at the moment. And then I could email, I guess I could email Mark and ask him, but uh, being in the city, uh, some places have maker labs that you might be able to uh, connect with if you're in a larger city. And Kankakee is not very large, but I know three individuals in town who have their own personal CNC machines. And they have already offered to me, hey, if you guys wanna bring stuff over and CNC it, they're excited to share their machines with other people. So if you kind of put the word out, uh, you may find people like that in your own area that will uh, be happy to have you over and put your G code into their machine and see if you can make it work. So I just thought I'd share that for what it's worth too. Yeah, there may be another school in your district or nearby that has a CNC that you can kind of partner up with that teacher, that kind of thing. And Greg, I know someone in Indianapolis. I'll, I'll check with them via email and then I'll get back with you specifically on that person. All right, thanks. I've, I've tried reaching out to Mark a couple of times, but he's exceptionally busy apparently. So. Oh, you know Mark? <laughs> uh, I've emailed him a couple of times and I, like I said, apparently he's super busy. So. Okay. And there was a question about the number of MLAs in the, um, in the uh, Summer Institute. 
And I believe that there are a total of four MLAs that we've assigned to you to do. So there's the design principles for guitars, there's the 3D CAD, um, basics for guitar design, there's a G code, and there's a CNC basics for guitar production. So those are the four MLAs that we kind of handpicked out of our library for you to do um, that we thought would be very valuable to, to you in getting your work done um, on your own design in CNC code. But there are a number of other MLAs that you'll find in the content library that um, you're welcome to go through if you, sh if you should choose. Um, but, uh, but we've, you're, you're, actually, you're actually getting a little bit more work um, than you would have if you'd done the face-to-face, -face, um, just because we have more flexibility with, with, with doing this, um, you know, online than uh, when, when we do this face-to-face -face and we're doing it concurrently with the electric, we're just kind of having to peel you away from the electric stuff for a little bit of time to work on some of the CNC stuff and then, then send you back to the electric. Um, here we kind of have the, the advantage of having a separate week just for the CNC, so um, so um, even though it does, it, when when I look at it, it doesn't seem like a, a, a tremendous amount of work, um, but it's actually more than you would have gotten <laughs> in the face to face. So so you'll you'll be ahead of the game, having been exposed to more of those MLAs. But yeah, there are only four that we're asking you to do. Each one of those has a quiz or an activity that goes along with it. Again, you don't need to turn those in, but if you want some feedback, we're happy to provide that for you. Any, Steve, any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Steve, this is Ray Pathman. Um, the first MLA mentions um, a 2019 Fusion guitar body shape creation video, and I found a little bit older one on YouTube, but, but I might have missed it. Is there a newer? version of that video because it specifically mentions 2019. No, it's the 2019 version that Tom prepared, right? And it it's on you YouTube. Didn't, it's on YouTube, yes. Okay, I Tom, you didn't you didn't um make a newer one, did you? No, I have not. Okay. Uh, okay, I think it said 2018, that's where I think I was confused, but if if there's oh. only one then I'll know I used the right one. Yeah. And so it, I think what I did was um um, in the MLA, I had listed the name of the of the video, so you could search specifically for that name and get to it in YouTube. Okay. Um, yeah, I see one called Fusion 360 Guitar Body Creation Basics. I just posted yes. a link in the chat. That okay, me? perfect. Let me take a look and yeah. see if I got that. Thanks, Thank Greg. You, Greg. Ah, that is a newer one. I didn't know why. I don't know why I don't see that in the list of videos on the STEM guitar channel. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, now that I got the link, that works. Okay. And does the does kind of bury it a little bit, but not too much. Oh, maybe I did. Well, did I create one? Yeah, I did create one last year for the group. But yeah. For the, I didn't know that there the were two out there. Yeah, um, Tom, I don't know if you remember, but at the uh, summit oh, in yeah. Birmingham, you had one, and I think that video was for that summit, and that's the one gotcha. I found. I didn't see this newer one on the YouTube channel, but I probably missed it. Okay, okay. Great. No, I, I think this is it. Okay, good. So we're, so we're clear there. We I should think. probably put the link in the MLA. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and do that just so since there appears to be maybe some confusion or possibility of confusion, I'll go ahead and, and um, add that into the MLA specifically. Steve Christie has a question on uh, the chat. When we have issues and need to talk to someone, who can we be contacting? My best guess is they should be contacting the person that uh, was assigned to the site they were originally scheduled for. So yeah, for, that's right. Yeah, so for Christy, that would be me. Um, and I'm going to apologize up front. I am the least experienced with uh, the CNC, so I may be a little delayed because I'll be having to hit up Scott and Steve for probably the answers you're looking for. But I will get you responses to any questions you have. 
and it would be the same for everyone else, you would be going to the person who was the instructor at the site you were originally assigned to. Right. And right. we have another one of these sessions scheduled for Friday. So uh, not that we want to up, you know, hold up your learning, but if it shows up on Thursday, we will hold another live session on Friday. Right. right. Okay. Thank well, you. Not Thursday, it's Friday, right? Yeah, originally I had it, it was in the, I had changed the, uh, the Zoom meeting. Uh, it was originally scheduled for Friday. I had mistyped it in the Zoom to Thursday, but I have updated that to the Friday timeline. Okay, okay. I didn't even notice that, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we are planning on noon Eastern on, on Friday to do this very same thing. And, and uh, since we'll, we'll be getting close to the end, or you should be getting close to the end at that point, we'll, um, we'll be able to put out any fires. But um, I'd really encourage everybody, if, if you encounter an issue, um, jump, on, jump on one of us right away, because um, it is a short week, and uh, I don't want you sitting around <laughs> wonder, wondering or waiting until Friday to, to try to get the answer. Um, we'll try to um, be as responsive as we can be um, to, uh, to any of your questions. And, and sometimes we'll refer that your question to somebody else. I referred question about CNC to Scott this morning just because he has a way of explaining some of that that, that is better than me. So, uh, <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll get you the answer as soon as uh, possible. Yeah, so any other uh, process or requirement questions or anything like that? Greg, you had something? I have a Fusion 360 question. Okay, go for it. Um, on the uh, profile body, can the profile body be enlarged to fit a different design guitar body? Um, so the, uh, the, the profile that, or the, the, the kind of the startup file that we have for you um, is for the blank size that we normally use um, in our institute. So if you're going to have a larger blank size or create a larger blank size, then you certainly could um, um, enlarge that for your own purposes, right? But How does one do that though? That's what I don't know. So you would need to go into that profile in, in Fusion and adjust the dimensions for that. So instead of the, what do we have it at 22 by 14 or something like that now, Tom, is that what we have? Yeah, that's in the yeah. That's in the. So you would want to adjust those parametric dimensions to the uh, to the size of the blank that you're doing, but keeping in mind that you 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 of course want to make sure that all of the, the existing pocketing information, the the um, pickup pockets and the neck pocket and all of that stay in kind of their relative position. So you're growing that um, you're growing that blank proportionally around those um, those items so that they remain centered in the in the guitar body centered in sense? the same size I, I, centered I guess, in the same size i guess my question is i don't know how to do that in, in the sketch well, it's done in the, the sketch. center tree sketch yeah okay all right I'll, I'll just leave it it doesn't matter thank you yeah so so the sketch dimension you you'd have to open up the sketch to access those dimensions and then you can adjust those dimensions right there. Ethan, um, are you still on? Yeah. Yeah, so um, if he adjusts the sketch dimensions just right right there um, in that open sketch, are those dimensions um, centered on the pockets or are they coming from like a zero zero in the corner? It, it looks like um, it's pretty arbitrary as far as the the size of the blank itself. But I, I don't think changing the blank itself will, will mess with any of the pockets or any important dimensions. Okay. No, I didn't think they would met, but just the relative position of the pockets to the blank. Not, um, not the, the position. I, I believe those are all um, constrained. Okay. So it should, you should just be able to, so Greg, you should just be able to change the actual number of the dimension and then the, then that sketch will increase in size and then that will increase the body blank size. 
that's the that's the short answer it might be longer <laughs> but uh, but what we can do too is um, just uh, you can you can send us the uh, the file and we can look at what you're working on and see that you're going about it in the proper way too that that might that and that's certainly uh, something that everybody can do is if you're if you're coming it up with a, a an issue and things aren't working properly um, send us the file and we can we can look it over and see where uh, where things go wrong our students have been making um, mistakes for years and years that we've been <laughs> that we've been so we probably have seen it before and uh, can get back to you right away and, and and help you out and Greg since you're in my group if you want to send me an email with just a description of what dimensions you want I can try to play with the file too and send it back to you along with a description of what I'm doing so you learn how to do it so you, we can try that and see yeah but there's no problem doing that because we're not actually going to be cutting any of these blanks during the Institute obviously so um, you can make it whatever size you like <laughs> I have a question about the best way to share files and I'm new to Fusion and so I was looking at like how I could submit it and like even just the file structure where to go and find my file since it's in the cloud. Um, yeah. How do I find it? And then like I was seeing that there was an option to send like to share the file. Um, do you want us downloading the file and then submitting it, or can we be sharing links? What's the best practice? I think it would probably be best to to download, you know, an offline version of the file and and send it to you know whoever your lead person is or or, or the person that you're you're working with um, in that respect. So um, I don't think you know. Oh. Doing a bunch of sharing is probably not going to be your best bet. Right. To, to, get a, uh, to get a file, if you click on the, the file down arrow and then you actually want to export it, and then from yeah. that export, you want to export it as a .f3d file. Yes. And that, that's an, an offline local file that you can... Uh, yes, that's Tom, Tom is going to demonstrate that now, but that's the, the reason that that that's good is because it does create that offline file that's not connected to your design so we can fiddle around with that and not mess up what you're already been working on so having that as a separate file I think is a good way to do so you can see what Tom is doing there he's saying export and he's going to give it a name and it's got an f3d extension and then you just have to pay attention to where it's going to go so right now it's going to his downloads folder and then he can just export that um, and then you can send that as a um, as an attachment to an email uh, i can also address or demo how to change the size of your body blank too if you if you want okay to yeah that. go it's, for that it's not hard no. um the big thing is it, down at the bottom, you've got the history of, of the design file that uh, Ethan actually developed this design file. And so the second structure is the body blank. And so if you, the second location here on the bottom is the body blank. And that is the uh, feature that you want to edit. And so we can edit the profile sketch associated with the feature. And so notice that there's a lot of dimensions associated with the structure of the components that we're going to be cutting out the the neck pocket the pickup pockets the drill locations for the bridge the mounting hole locations but there's no dimensions associated with the body blank so you could actually go in and add some additional dimensions to the body blank or you can just grab it and so if you had a weird piece of wood and if you wanted to measure it you could mill That's it out a of a piece, piece of wood I know exactly. So you could do whatever you you would like with this piece of wood. What we ask is that you don't. And if you need to modify for your own CNC machine, you know the the locations of this, then save or export this as a separate file so it doesn't get um, transmitted somewhere along the way as a file that is used for um, our. Uh, body blanks that we have on our uh, storefront website. So this is all designed around the body blanks that 
that we uh, actually develop and manufacture at the Sinclair lab. But if you're going to manufacture your own body blanks, which is perfectly appropriate, just make sure that you name it something separate than uh, the, the CNC Institute or something like that. So, but that's how you can modify it. And then of course you've got the undo to go back to where it was, but you can also just place a sketch dimension on it if you wanted to, to make it wider or taller. Tom, while you have this up, I have a question for you then. Uh-oh. Go ahead. Uh, during the optional Zoom we had yesterday, we got on the topic of if someone wanted to trace an existing shape as a starting point for proportions and sizes and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't exactly remember how placing that photo in here and it'll stay there for you to be able to trace it. Because I know my high school students, sometimes they'll put it there and as soon as they click to draw, it disappears. And I couldn't specifically remember how. Yeah, so under the insert, you can insert um, different files. And so you can insert a decal or you can insert a canvas. Um, and so inserting a canvas, I think, is the way that you would want to use this. Yeah, because um, that's uh, that's associated then with a sketch plane that right. has a physical location in your model. And so you'd want to insert that image into, onto the canvas, and then you can sketch on it. Just so to be clear, Tom's talking about a painting canvas and not a canvas course. Correct. Yeah, exactly. The, <laughs> the canvas inside fusion. And uh, the idea is that you could take the image, put it onto a sketch, and then use that to sketch your shape. Uh, but of course, be cognizant of copyright, trademark, and uh, other uh, ownership issues with uh, the guitar designs. Most of the bodies are not uh, copyrighted uh, or trademarked or patented. However, the headstock designs are. Um, though the body shape, some manufacturers such as Gibson uh, will, if you produce it in a uh, larger set, will actually uh, look at uh, a lawsuit issue with you. So be careful if you allow your students to just take uh, uh, designs and just totally uh, replicate them. Yes, Assuming you, that they're going to sell it. If they're not going to sell their guitar, you don't need to worry about it. <laughs> That's yeah, true. it came from the standpoint of someone looking at that blank, at that spread, and saying, proportionally, you know, they couldn't even conceptualize how big something was. Sure. And, but absolutely, copyright is something to keep in mind. Thank you for going over that. No, oh, absolutely. I saw some other chat things pop up. I didn't see if there were any questions. Uh, let's see. I think Steve caught it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've got yeah. Do not change the sizes of any of the pockets or anything or else the uh, guitar necks uh, will not fit properly. Things like that. If you were to use any of our uh, products and our products are based on Fender Strat style neck pockets. So that is the, uh, the foundational aspect of what we've, designed it as and Ethan has done a phenomenal job of maintaining those designs for us. I thought I heard somebody coming in with a question. I've got a few questions actually on Fusion. Uh, so after you complete a sketch, how do you add a point to it? So are you talking about like in a spline? Yeah, like uh, I watched the video that Tom did, and he mentioned so you can add a point after you're done with it. But I yeah. can't. Actually... He's going to show you right now. Cool. <laughs> Might want to just keep that up. I've got a couple more questions. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Let me finish my sketch. Point option. But I don't. Yeah. So right now I haven't put a sketch or anything on this, so I right. need to add a sketch and on the surface and so. I figured Steve would be doing this, but he's on an iPad, so. Yeah, I can't. Sorry, Tom. 
because my, right. my PC camera is horrible, so I have to do it on this. All right, so we, we added a spline. You should be able to right mouse click on the spline. Um, you can ins insert a spline fit point uh, at the point that you right mouse clicked at. And so you can okay. add additional fit points and that allows you to grab and control the spline uh, more than just the points that you clicked on. Okay. Can you delete a point on a spline? I didn't see yes. that option. So yeah, if you write, if you're actually highlighting a spline point, you should be able also to delete the coinc coincident point. Yep. Okay, cool. So if you put too many on there, yeah, you can get rid of it. And so not only you can control how the effect of the spline occurs right. too, not only the data point location, but also the effect with the spline can be managed by dragging the spline uh, control in and out. Yeah. I and if a, you're, you know, I was, there was a question that popped up about um, adding an additional spline or adding a spline to, a, to an existing spline. And if you just click on the, uh, the ends, you know, of the existing spline, it'll automatically create a coincident constraint for you. And, and, uh, but you have to be careful that that point needs to be highlighted when you're adding that uh, that new point. The end point that you're adding to needs to be highlighted, so um, so that it creates that coincident constraint. Yeah. So you um, actually want to make sure that you get the little square when you connect yeah. your splines hey, as you're Tom, designing. Could go you ahead. go ahead and like close that up and show me how to do the extrude? Because I was able to extrude the body, but I couldn't get the negative side of that to come out. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong there. Uh, can I uh, screen share this one? Sure. Who said that? That was, that was Ethan. 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 All right. So, so let me that. stop my share. Well, Ethan, go ahead. You got control, Ethan. You, you're a co-host, so you can just do a share button and share your screen. All right. Um, so one of the one of the things that you really want to when you make your sketch, you want to. Um, I, I know somebody said something about sketch twenty. Um, don't worry about that. You want to actually edit the profile sketch sketch, and that's actually the the sketch that you want to draw on. Um, so uh, start your uh, your line uh, on this neck pocket. At one point, make sure you either have an X so it's um, coinciding with that line, and you can go ahead and draw your outline. Get inside the no fly zones. And then again, when you end it, make sure that you're um, on that boundary for the, uh, the neck pocket. And then you can hit enter to create that. And then you can kind of tell that you're on the right track because it'll highlight the whole um, area blue, either the inside or the outside. And then to actually do the extrusion down here at the bottom of the history, um, you want to finish your sketch first. So that's done. And then you actually want to roll this um, forward because this last extrusion is actually what um, is the extrusion threat. So uh, you know, if you roll it forward, it doesn't change anything. But if you right click and then say edit feature, it'll pop this up. And so now you've got the whole thing selected. And um, you only want, this is actually an intersect operation. So it's going to take everything from the inside. So you only want your inside um, profile. Time here. And then click OK. And that's okay. The, the extrusion. So it's it's um, editing that that last extrusion feature at the end. It's kind of uh, a little tricky because when you, when you get the file, it's actually rolled back one. So you want to make sure to uh, roll it forward. Okay. To do that. Uh, I got one more question too about the actual CNC process. Once you have a, a file design finished and you're ready to actually cut out that body blank, 
how do you guys get those peg holes? Does the CNC cut those or do you measure them and drill them? Um, how does that process work when you get to that point? Um, when you say peg holes, are you talking about yeah, the, uh, the alignment pins? Uh, those are actually hand drilled in an operation. Those are the, okay. the mounting points. Okay, that's um, what I assumed. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's, thank you. Uh, you're very welcome. Thanks, Ethan. I hope that cleared a lot up as far as that. All right, anything else from anybody? Scott left the room. <laughs> uh, Steve, I think there was a question about where to find the recording, if this is to be recorded. Um, so Tom's going to save uh, it. He's recording it now and save it, and he will send it out to the team leaders and we'll distribute it. It'll probably be hosted on YouTube. Okay. That'll be the easiest. Oh, hi, Frank. You have a question? Um, can everybody hear me? I had to change my microphone, I think. Okay. Gotcha, Frank. So I'm, <clears throat> you know, I'm not a, a tech ed teacher, so this is the first time I'm using any kind of drafting type thing. Um, and, you know, the, the understanding of the design of it is fine, but getting it into the software is where my question is. What things should I be following along with to get a better understanding of the, the software? I checked out those pre-work uh, shop, you know, videos. I have a really nice looking conduit, you know, box, but that's not going to, you know, make a very good guitar sound. So, you know, as you guys are going through all the shapes and the splines and all the other stuff, yeah, I have no idea what's going on there. So uh, what things should I follow along with? I haven't gone through most of the core stuff yet because I've been watching those tutorial videos, um, but they weren't necessarily guitar related tutorial videos, just understanding the software a little bit. Right. We do have a video that is specifically guitar related that is in the um, MLA. Does, um, let's see. Let me find it here. Just hold tight for a second. Here we go. I think I'm finding it. It's the one, Tom, that has your video of going through the um, the CNC, or not, I'm sorry, the fusion process. I'm trying to. Oh, I yeah, I don't have YouTube up right now. Okay. Uh, let's see. Creating your, oh, here we go. Okay, so there is. Um, on the create, creating your design, your guitar body design uh, module um, in the uh, in the list of modules, you go down. There's a, there's a video to watch, which is just me telling you what you're going to do. Um, and then a little bit further down, uh, step number two, there's the view the view, YouTube video 2019 Fusion 360 guitar body shape creation. And so that's Tom specifically going through the the design of a guitar body in fusion. Okay. So, so yeah, somebody that, posted it, that link in the chat. It's the one that we were talking about earlier where Ray asked about the 2019 versus the 2018 version. Isn't that what you're talking about, Steve? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. I have that one open. Just knowing where to start was the big question. Yeah. Yeah. Lars is really good. Um, he gets a little, talky at times but he's really good on his his presentations and stuff so um he's been running fusion now for several for quite a few years so just fyi he's one of the yeah. guys that everybody goes to but it is that is generic content as as the this person was describing there and um and so this video um that we have um, available to you is specific to guitar design and using fusion so tom walks you sure. through that process Okay. Thank you. Sure. And I'll and I'll update um, that uh, module to have the specific link to that video, so we're making sure that we're you're getting to the right one. All right. Anything else, anybody? Okay. 
Can I make a comment and then slap me down and tell me to be quiet if it's inappropriate? I always do, Tim. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I thought Matt had a really good idea that he emailed to his group, which was if they need a brain break and they have a little downtime, that they could start sanding on the guitar body of the kit they have just to move the process along and take a little break. Um, I don't know if Debbie has... Uh, the modules open yet or the pages open yet for that but just to no. give you a hint you know start with like a 220 grit sand with the grain and then uh go up to 320 grit and sand with the grain and just make it smooth and then at one point after you've done 320 take a, a slightly damp sponge wipe it down let it dry you don't want to soak it you want to just get the surface damp that's what's called a grain raise and it'll make it feel kind of whiskery when it's dry hit it again with the 320 and you'll be all set for next week but like oh gee whiz greg's already done <laughs> <laughs> man is one of those overachievers yeah, he's yeah. he's ahead of the game okay, <laughs> okay. but uh yeah so that's something you could do if you need a brain break i just wanted to throw that out as an option yeah and th um, thank and I, and you I for the so, sorry, Steve, just one second. Tim, thank uh -huh. you for the compliment, number one. I, you know, anytime I can get those. But uh, yesterday during the Pemridge Zoom, Chad came on and we specifically asked him about body work since Chad is on the electric canvas team and all. And he said there's no expectation for folks having anything, for you guys having anything done on your Econo kit. But that idea that Tim is just sharing, if you wanted to start painting, get or stain or finish whatever you're doing, getting prepped for that now, it's certainly not a bad idea. Um, Tim has a great video about doing true oil. I had a video out there about uh, specifically primer and paint and getting ready for that. And then I know the rest of the team all has stuff and things out there, but don't feel obligated to be doing that this week. But Totally optional. And if you do start sanding, um, stay clear of the neck pocket. Um, we don't want to change the size of that because otherwise then the neck won't fit properly. So just just a word of caution in that in that respect. Yeah. Okay. Sanding the neck also, you want to be careful of that. Right. Yeah. Where the neck pocket and the neck fit, they yeah. they need to remain flat, and so sanding it and working with it, you can do a little bit, but don't you know do too much. You can do some light sanding on on the area, so that way, as you get grain raised with the finish, uh, you can sand that away. But yeah, right. And somebody made a comment: we don't want to accumulate a lot of paint in the neck pockets or on the on the neck. That's very true very true okay good well um just uh over over the course of the week um fire off your questions to us as soon as you have them and and as tim says when you feel like you need a little physical dis distraction start sanding um and uh while you're waiting for us to respond to your question and we'll try to get to them um as soon as we can so any yeah. last comments yeah I think there's a suggestion from is this Steve Robbie saying about if Ethan has to make a common mistakes for newbies, list or video. That <laughs> I feel like some of my Fusion 360 mistakes are mysteries to me. Yeah, yeah. I could definitely try and put a little something together. Just the basics uh, start out, you know, what's what not to do and what's common practices. Yeah. That would be good, yeah. If I made that video, it would probably be 10 hours long. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm still, you know, we st I still make a lot of mistakes, so yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's part of that process of learning. It is, it is. And, and actually, all of those mistakes that you're making now are gonna benefit you with your students in the classroom because they're gonna do the same thing. And just to share a common mistake I've made that you all might is in, breaking my spine and starting over again 
it looks like I'm right on that dot and I haven't been and I go back and it won't close. And the trick is you've got to zoom in about as far as you can zoom in and follow the line. And all of a sudden you'll see the spot where, what is it? Probably a, a ten thousandth of an inch, the dots are off and you have to bring those two dots together to close the sketch. Yeah. You can also add a coincident constraint to the two endpoints. Yep. I was going to suggest the same thing is pick the two endpoints with coincident and you'll be all set. Yeah. All right. All right. We well, have, ha have fun designing your guitar bodies this week. That's part of the, 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 the really fun part of this CNC class is getting to create a unique design uh, that is yours uh, to use. And uh, hopefully in the future, you'll have the opportunity to get it cut out, uh, whether it's in your own CNC or at one that uh, may be made available. And, uh, and, and some of you may have access to a 3D printer and you could actually make a little mini keychain version of your guitar as well. <laughs> it's true. You could section it off and 3D print the instrument also that take mm -hmm. a lot of material, but you could do well, that. Yeah. I was thinking the keychain, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right, everybody. All right, good. So stay in contact with us during this week and we'll get you through it. Good and luck. I'll, and All I'll right. post the recording right. later today. Okay. We'll get to the recording. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody. Bye now. Have a great week.